And part of crime scene reconstruction is just trying to be creative with the resources that you have at that time to document and preserve and then reproduce that evidence in court. Evidence, by very definition, needs to be an accurate representation of what you collected on scene. And when you're talking about the case at hand, the situation, the scenario at hand, that's very hard to replicate as evidence. Evidence has to be accurate. Anything that we would have tried to do, we would have had to incorporate human error. Yes, we could have put the vehicle up on a lift and we could have uh, utilized a plumb bob and hung a plumb bob from every point of evidence and drawn a picture on a large canvas on the floor that would have been you know, almost 20 feet long by 10 feet wide and drawn out the tires, you know, almost like a footprint. But again, human error, and, and we take those things into account. So it's, it's a possibility that it would have been accepted in court, but certainly with the resources available today and that are available through 3D forensic scanning, um, we can do a lot better than that. I think that was a good suggestion, whoever said about hanging the markers, but the X7 can actually see the evidence. So it's literally capturing data almost faster than he can manually register. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So put all that together, and from the front to the back, we were able to draw a line that clearly indicated that he did not brush up against the back of the car and not go under the undercarriage at all. In fact, he did go under the undercarriage, and even at the biggest stretch of his body laid out, just say, for instance, he was six feet tall, he still went so far underneath the vehicle that his hair, right, you know, his head was definitely at the middle of the car because it was a hair follicle from his head that we located in the center of the vehicle. And then we worked back um, to the back and we were able to, to definitively say that that is the manner of the collision, which without the, with the help of a 3D scanner, it would have been very challenging to demonstrate that to a jury. The jury was very receptive to the 3D scan. When they had questions, I could very easily turn the scan and they could see whatever they wanted to see. It was easy for them to understand because short of holding the evidence in their hand, they could see, fly through, manipulate, you know, visually uh, the evidence that we had available to us at the time that we took the evidence from the underneath the vehicle. As crime scene reconstruction and forensic documentation progress into the 21st century, I think you'll see more and more of this scanning becoming a norm and almost an expected norm in courtrooms as it becomes more and more presented in, in high profile cases. I believe that level of investigation is what my family deserves, what your family deserves. When we're talking about providing the highest level of professionalism and investigative skill, taking the human error out of it is part of that responsibility. When we're documenting evidence, we don't want any human error. We want it to be 100% best as possible represented to the jury so they can see it just like we saw it in the moment.